Hi! You guys seem to love my previous RimWorld guide, so I thought I'd hit you up with another 5 advanced cheesy tricks for RimWorld. 4 of these tricks can be done with just a vanilla base game, so without further ado, let's get into it. Trick number 1. The Auto Mortar Trick. If you own the Royalty DLC, I'm sure you have encountered mech clusters. Mech clusters can spawn with an Auto Mortar and they can be a pain in the ass. An Auto Mortar can already start bombing your base while the rest of the hive is still inactive. To counter that, you can simply build a roof over the mortar like this. The construction will not wake up the mechanoids. The mortar is now blocked and it cannot fire anymore. Even when the other mechanoids are active and trying to kill you, the mortar still can't fire. Trick number two, the caravan trick. Are you tired that your pawns can only carry one tiny knife or 75 solid granite blocks at the same time? Well, they can stuff their inventories full with a lot more crap during a caravan trip? Yeah, me neither. So, let me introduce you to the caravan trick. Some cargo pots with stuff dropped, but I don't want to keep sending people over to haul it back. With this trick, you can fill up your pawn's inventory and haul it all back at once. First you claim it all in a stockpile zone and you send your pawn over. Then you form a caravan with that pawn and you only assign the cargo pot loot to him. In this case, the bison wool. Then he will form the caravan and put all of the items in his inventory. You can then simply send him home, delete the old stockpile zone and make him drop the loot in your base before you cancel the caravan order. This way you save a lot of time. There's also a mod called Pick Up and Haul that does this for you, but this is a nice vanilla trick. Number 3. Preventing infestations. Infestations? Some people hate them, some people love them. But let me show you how you can prevent them from spawning in your base. So as you can see here, I mined out some steel. If I click on this button on the bottom right, you can see the difference between thin roofs and overhead mountain roofs easily. Thin roofs are in light green and overhead mountain roofs are in dark green. Infestations can only spawn on an overhead mountain tile bigger than a 1x1. There are more factors to take into account when dealing with infestation spawn chances, but that is not important for this trick. So let me spawn an infestation to show you that it would indeed spawn here. As you can see, the infestation spawned indeed in our little steel mine. So you could replace all the mined out tiles with walls to prevent this from happening in the future. But that is just a waste of materials. As I've mentioned before, infestation cannot spawn in a singular tile. So if you fill up all the overhead mountain tiles in a pattern of 1x1s, you can prevent an infestation from spawning there with the minimal use of resources and labor. There we go, the game was unable to spawn an infestation there. You can utilize this by making a bait room somewhere close to your base to start your own insect jelly farm. One more thing, keep in mind that a 1x1 overhead mountain tile adjacent to a thin mountain roof can still provide suitable conditions for infestation, as you can see here. Trick number 4, the vitals monitor trick. Just like this chair can be used for multiple stages at once, one vital monitor can be used for up to 8 beds at the same time. Have a look at this layout. With a bit of smart planning you can save up a lot of resources and space. If you look at the info tab here, you can see that all the hospital beds are affected by this singular vital monitor, as long as the beds are adjacent to it horizontally, vertically or diagonally. Last but definitely not least, trick number 5, the power switch trick. A kill box with turrets is amazing, but it uses a lot of power. Luckily there's a switch you can build, but then you need a pawn to use the switch before you get them into position. This trick will allow you to turn your turrets on without using pawns, and the game can even be paused. So the first thing you want to do is to make your kill box and make it so that your normal power lines can power the turrets. Then you want to build one conduit that's not connected to a power source. During peaceful times, your turrets need to be connected to that unconnected and unpowered conduit, but then when you need your turrets, you click on the reconnect button and connect them to the main power lines. You do this for all your turrets. Once you unpause the game, the turrets will turn on and turn those enemies into meat bags, ready for the butcher table. And this can be done for a kill box or a turret setup of any size. I will show you a quick clip of a kill box I used not too long ago on Twitch. The rate is relatively small, but you can easily see how you can utilize this power trick. Attack, I want to see my kill box. Work one more time. Alright, reconnect. Turn on the power. Oh, Jesus, it's a bit far. Turn on the power. Turn it all on. Alright, are you connected? You are connected. All turrets are turned on. Yes, here we go. Oh my god. And that's it for now. If you learned something new today, please feed the YouTube algorithm by leaving a like. If you got any great tricks or tips yourself, let us know in the comments. Or tell me on Twitch. I stream RimWorld way too often there anyways. I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one.